Hello, as you know, my name is Kainton, and today we are going to continue from where we stopped. Before now, we discussed the problem we are trying to solve, and that was a problem of bipartite, uh, bipartite matching. And so to do that, we introduced concepts like uh, flow network and also cuts. Today, we are going to review flow networks and see how we can use a flow network problem to also solve problem of bipartite, bipartite matching. Remember to click on subscribe so that you get notified when I make new lessons. All right, let's get started. Um, there are some definitions you need to know about flow network, and these are very important because they set the foundation for you to actually get started. We say that a flow network is a graph, a directed graph with the following features. So each edge in the graph has a capacity of a uh, of a capacity CE which is a non-negative number so we also have there is a single source node S which is which belong to the set of vertices there is a single thing T which belongs to the set of vertices as well so S and T the source and sink they are part of the set of vertices Nodes that are not S and T are called the internal nodes. Let me take my pen so that I can illustrate uh, a few of these. So let's assume that you have, let's just assume you have this graph. And you have this. This is the destination. It has to be directed. It has to be directed. Uh, yeah, this goes here, this goes here. This is S, and uh, let's say we have a point in this way. We have one point in here. So let's assume this is our flow network. And we have this is A, B, C, and D. So in this case, we have v to be a set of all the vertices or all the nodes so we have s a b c uh s a b c d and t so this is so when we say something like s is have the symbol and also v means s is part of the the set of the vertices and the same thing goes for T. So these vertices here, A, B, C, D, they are called internal nodes. So keep it in mind or internal vertices as the case may be. So this is sync and this is the source. So this is how flow network is defined. Now there are some assumptions that are made about flow network and one of them is that no nodes enter the source and no nodes uh, leaves the sink. So let me take my pen so I could illustrate it for you. So when you have a source, the very first node, there is nothing like any nodes, uh, any edge entering, any, uh, entering the source. When we have the sink where uh, is the final uh, vertex then there is nothing like any no uh, uh, any edge leaving the sink there is at least one edge incident to each node so there is no uh, node that is not uh, uh, having an edge connecting it then all capacity of edges are integers all right so we now come to what is a flow. That is another thing you need to know. Now, we we defined, uh, let me just go back a bit. Uh -huh. We have this. So for each edge, there is a number attached to it. So let's get back here. So what is a flow? We define a flow to, to be uh, the network carrying capacity of the edge or the amount of network that is flowing across the edge. So let's take for instance, because you need to understand the difference between capacity and flow. So if you have a flow going this way and you have the capacity to be five, it means that 
This edge can carry up to five units. But at each instant of time, there might be something less than or equal to five. So you can have a flow of six, right? So if you have a road uh, of a six lane or five lane, you can only have a traffic of four or three, uh, as the case may be. So that is why we define an ST flow is a function that maps each edge onto a number such that F edge uh, you have for each edge you have a you have a real number. The value of Fe represents the amount of flow carried by the edge Fe. And now these are the two important constraints you need to know. Uh, this capacity constraint says that for each edge we have zero is less than or equal to the flow is less than or equal to the capacity. So sometimes is written like this. So if the flow is three, the capacity might be five. So the capacity has to be either, the, the flow has to be either zero or less than or equal to the, the capacity of that edge. So I hope you understand. And now you have conservation constraints say that for each node other than the, other than the sink or, or, the, or the source, we have sum of all flows entering into V equal to the sum of all the flows entering uh, out of V, out of V, yeah. Out of here, uh, out of V, yeah. So this is conservation. So, so I think uh, let's, let's use the eraser because I think it's, uh, it's correct. So what is what here is saying 